Simon from SimonWinter.com. Uh, a couple of South African Reds here, both sub uh, nine pounds, uh, both with Cabernet Sauvignon in there. But uh, first one is a blend. The legend of Big Bill, ridiculously Bill. No, ridiculously big, not ridiculously Bill. Um, and blend is Petit Verdo, Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz from the Western Cape. Uh, weighing in at, uh, I can't see the alcohol because someone stuck a label over the top of it. Well, uh, uh, while I'm away opening it and uh, giving it a sniff, I might see if I can peel that off a little bit and uh, and see what it, it weighs in at. Well, it's got that uh, slightly baked berry character about it. I didn't have much luck. I, I made a bit of a holix of uh, trying to get the label off, but... Um, I'll see if I can find somewhere where it, it shows what the alcohol is. But I stick my nose in there, and yes, it's these berries and uh, black currants. But um, in particular, it feels like they've gone ever so slightly dry, um, almost as if some of them have shriveled up on the vine. So you're getting this, as well as the fresh fruit, fr fresh fruit flavours. Uh, you're getting this little bit of uh, desiccation. That slightly, uh, if you if you make a fruit pudding, that bit that bakes on round the side of the side of the container. And yes, I mean, you notice that uh, desiccation in the uh, slight dryness. There is this nice fruit, um, there's this freshness and uh, uh, a juicy black currant and blackberry, but then um, there, there is something there that's just drying everything out. And uh, I mean, I've only just opened it and it's not, it's come out of a slightly cool cellar. So it may be that as the wine warms up, um, it gets a little bit softer and more user friendly, as it is at the moment. It's it's okay. Uh, one of those that I if my if I'd, I'd finished my first glass and um, then it comes comes the, the second one I'd be going mm, might see if there's something else. And if there weren't, well I'd probably have another glass of it, have another swig of it. Yeah, a bit of licorice there. That um, licorice says to me that there's something in there that's uh, um, got a little bit overripe as well. Second one. Uh, so this is Warwick, uh, 2015 Cape Lady. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa. I don't think this is from their um, their own vineyards. Warwick Estate Space is one of the like stalwarts of Stellenbosch, uh, but I think with this one, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're buying in a little bit of fruit, or it may be that they've got some of their own vineyards in other parts of the the uh, Western Cape. Anyway, let's <coughs> give this one a whirl. And this smells more uh, herby, minty, and. Uh, it's not, I, I don't think it's, it's a wine that's um, trying as hard as maybe Big Bill is. Maybe Big Bill is sort of, I think it's trying to make a little bit of an impact. I think the goal here is to make a decent drinkable Cabernet Sauvignon at a sensible price. And it certainly smells, it has that li slight leafy edge that, uh, that, that, that Cabernet, for me, should always have. I think if you try and uh, eradicate that touch of greenness in Cabernet, you end up uh, with something that's... Uh, over the top and raisiny, and so it, it smells good. It smells black currantie, a bit of blackberry cassis, and all that lot. Uh, a touch of herb and um, a little bit of what I call the South African bake, but not so much so much that it's uh, dominating the wine. Easy drinking, juicy, fresh, vanilla. This um, quite voluptuous fruit, and the finish you're left with um, is more confident, I think, than the. Um, uh, the big bill, big bill felt like it was almost had, had been overmade. Here, it feels like the uh, the winemakers know how to make wine, but they also know when to stop making wine. Um, so, a more drinkable thing, um, and it was like a few pence in in the difference. I would uh, stick with the Warwick. Big bill, okay, but um, Warwick, my favourite of those two. See you soon.